What if you were the living embodiment of all pervasive peace? What if all sentient beings all around you increase their vibration towards harmony by merely being in your contact? What if through conscious reasoning, focused will, and intentional living, you reform yourself? thereby becoming a catalyst in sparking transformation in others. I'm Shilpa Lewis, meditation, mindset, and mindfulness coach for midlife mompreneurs, and you are listening to Omnipresent Awareness, the podcast that will inspire you to use your story to serve humanity in not just healing, but thriving as souls each fulfilling their highest purpose. Welcome to Omnipresent Awareness with Shilpa. This is your host, Shilpa Lewis, owner and founder of Omni Mindfulness Coaching. Before we get started, if you haven't already booked a free discovery session with me, click on the link in the description. I am a holistic transformational life coach specializing in helping midlife mompreneurs bring balance, clarity, and life alignment both personally and professionally so that you may live your best life. There is tremendous healing value in simply being able to know someone is holding authentic space for you to listen and be accessible as an accountability partner and mentor. If you feel overwhelmed or if you feel the need for some support navigating life as a mother or as an entrepreneur, I would love to provide you with my coaching. If any anecdotes from the stories of the guests from this episode or any of the podcast episodes resonate with you, or if you find any value at all from the content from these episodes, then consider booking a free discovery call with me. Together, we can manifest my vision to be instrumental in the biggest rise in consciousness and awareness and human transformation. And now, here is today's episode. And now, a conversation recorded with my partner in awareness, Tanya, from our joint podcast, Mindful Mompreneur Moments. And oh yeah, if you could, please listen to the very end of the podcast for powerful insights from our guest. Thank you. Up next, Alexandra Thornton. Alexandra is the owner and founder of Ali Tagwa Jewelry. Her jewelry, much like her personality, echoes her uniqueness, passion, and authenticity. Ali creates bold, colorful eco jewels that give back to the environment. Materials used to create the jewels are repurposed natural elements that include tagua, nut, acai berry, pombo seeds, and orange peel, just to name a few. Her professional journey started in Ecuador. She was once a journalist by profession, an archaeologist by degree, and she's always been an ecologist by heart. When she turned 33, she bravely moved to the United States to start a new chapter of her life as a jewelry artist and designer of eco-jewelry. Giving back to her community and supporting the rainforest conservation is true to her heart. As a designer of organic jewelry, she has found a way to fuse her passion for jewelry making with her desire to repurpose natural resources while creating employment for indigenous locals. One of her visits along the coastal town of Ecuador coincided with when the rivers were heavily flooded after a strong El Nino. In that visit, she had her aha moment, which is when she decided to dedicate her life to the making and promotion of rainforest tagua nuts specifically found along the coast of the Manabi Ecuador coastline. The rains were forcing the loss of precious tagua nuts of the palm trees. At that specific moment, she discovered her mission. She decided to provide locals in the rural areas, specifically during the rainy season, with another way to generate income. 
So she travels to that area to train locals to create the jewels, so that they have employment. She believes her customers feel empowered with her statement jewels, knowing that ten percent of her sales also go back to the education of orphan girls in Ecuador. Alexandra has intentionally designed her business and professional life to live an eco-conscious life. Her travels to gather materials for her jewels have taken her deep into the spots of the rainforest in the Amazon. She has educated herself about the threats to preserved areas from the oil industry and the possible triggering of climate change due to the deforestation in that area. What awakens her heart is to mindfully listen to the sounds of the rainforest in the early evening. Her fondest memories of her travels include listening to the orchestra of frogs, insects, wildcats through the night, and to awaken in the morning to the sounds of monkeys, which sound like boisterous wind or a little hurricane echoing deep from the rainforest. Organic jewelry by Ali. Is a labor of love to create awareness about eco-friendly jewelry making. To her customers, Ali always says it is about finding happiness in the little things, like accessorizing your outfit. She says, "I want you to smile any time you wear my jewels. If my jewelry has the power to make you feel confident, smile, and feel happy in helping to create a better world for others." Then I have accomplished my life mission, and now here's Ali. Thank you so much for being with us, Alessandra. Welcome, Alessandra, eco-conscious designer of jewelry. I am just so excited to have you here. So we're going to jump right into it. Our first question is: How did you arrive at setting your life intention? To intención de vida, to become an entrepreneur, and tell us a little bit about your journey as an artist, and particularly、yeah. how you became inspired to create your eco-conscious jewelry line. Yeah,、uh, the thing is, I was always a little girl interested in the National Geographic magazines and the National Geographic specials, and if you ask me when I was a little girl what you want to be. When you grow up, I would say I want to be like James Goodall. That she was my hero. James Goodall and Diane Fossey were watching the National Geographic and Jacques Cousteau. So、uh, the light brought me to study archaeology and journalism later to be more like how you say more professional, something that gives you money because I wanted to be naturalist. Is what I wanted to be when I was a kid.、Um, The library me to study, but I always had the ecological heart in me.、Um, when I moved to America, I start to volunteer at the San at the San Diego Archaeological Center in Escondido. Part of my time, and on weekends I was going to the farmers markets with the artisans crafts from Ecuador, from my original country where I come from, because I come. Here when I was 33 years old, a old lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then one day I traveled to Ecuador to get more alpaca clothes and more tawano jewelry and and more our artisans crafts. And when I went to the little town in Sosote, where the tawano workshops exist, and there are many artisans producing work with these tawa knots that come from the rainforest and from the tree, I saw that everything was flooded. They had a very bad El Nino season, and everything the flood the flood was separated the crops, the the rice,、um, and the people had lost everything. And I was very sad to see how the people can lose everything for a bad rain for a bad season in El Nino. But then I saw. We went to the the banana plantations and the 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 palm tree plantations that produce the tawano that looks like coconut. They are tall, and I discovered they were still alive. They 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 were saved. So I say, if the people had another income that give the families income and work when this happened to be a bad El Nino season, and this is the tawano that is tall, and we can produce jewelry. 
that is ecofriendly and provide jobs to these rural communities in bad times, we can make a good thing from my country. And I, that moment, that was my aha moment. I decide that I will dedicate my life to the creation and promotion of sustainable rainforests, jewelry, the preserved forests, and give the people eco-friendly jobs in my country. That is beautiful. I, I really want people to uh, see this beautiful artwork. By the way, you, the, your, um, your shop is beautiful where you do all of your work. You were telling us right before we came on. So for people who are just listening to the podcast, we're going to have this on our YouTube channel as well, because it, it's worth seeing, actually seeing the beautiful necklace that Shilpa has on, because she, that was made by you, Alessandra, and the beautiful things that you have also in your hand and in your shop there. So mm -hmm. go ahead on our YouTube channel for that. Beautiful. And what a beautiful mission. What a beautiful mission. Absolutely, Alessandra, your mission is so needed at this point, especially with so many things that happen there, injustices towards animals and the environment in general. Um, what, just a little shout out, here's a piece, a bright orange, bold colors that you're known for. Um, so Alessandra, clearly you're really mindful of a variety of areas in life, whether it's the environment or animals, um, how do you integrate any mindfulness mindfulness modalities in your personal and professional life? For example, meditation or mantras? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, there are good days and bad days, you know. Um, uh, I always say every morning, I feel blessed. I think waking up every morning with the intention of feeling blessed and taking the day as it comes and feeling with the blessing I am alive. That means it's another day that I can fight in the I continue in my dream. I'm feeling that blessing and thankful every day. I think is what attract more blessings and my, more opportunities to me. Um, when somebody close you a door, like it happened to me when I had a little car in old town San Diego. The lady told me you had to to leave the car because I rented to somebody else that is paying me more money for that car. And I was, oh no, I am losing all my income in, in my car in old town San Diego, a very popular place and tourist, and I will lose my income, I will lose everything. But that bring me to start to visit the stores and wholesale my line and grow. So it happened that somebody tell you no or close a door to you and be sure that is the opening somebody close a door and there will be 10 more doors opening to you. You just have to continue faithful and loyal to your dreams. And we are each one a blessed spirit from God that come to this earth to share our gifts with the world. And we don't, if we don't share those gifts with the world, they go under the soul in the grave with us. So we have that duty to share what is the best of you and me to the world. So if something falls, don't worry. Something better is coming for you. Yeah. So, so just being grateful is what you're saying is the, the powerful thing that leads pretty much every morning for you. And just having that spirit of gratitude, it's just a, an amazing way to lead your life. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And you also feel like when it is something bad, like right now, the pandemic, and we say, oh my God, we lost all the shows, the light shows, you know, Cheaper, you know, I mean, my light shows that I can selling a light show in TQS is thousands of dollars in a show. And those cover me for a month or so because you got a good income. And say, no, I lost all my shows now. But everything is temporary. Everything will pass. And you have to say, everything will pass. And I will pass this. And I will survive. 
and will stand in here, loyal to my faith and loyal to my dream. Your dream never die on you, never, never, because you have bigger things to do. That's right, and you're you're doing you're doing the world a disservice if you're not showing what you're able to do. Like if you were not to show your beautiful artwork, it would be a disservice to the earth and to the people that could benefit from the beautiful art that you do. So yes, I completely agree with you. You put so much mindfulness into the very inception, the creation, for seeing an opportunity where some people would have just dismissed it as some calamity and you looked at it as these are things that i can repurpose turn them into a necklace and they look like ivory yeah okay. yeah very nice so alessandra what does intentional living actually mean to you in relation to your business or even current life events such as the pandemic you kind of gave us a an idea of that but if maybe you could um, reiterate what intentional living means to you yeah, intentional living means that a business is never divorced from sustain, sus, being sustainable, for being fair, and for having community involvement. And that's what my my company is, is sustainable, is being fair because it's supporting women in Ecuador that can work from home and they don't need to get inside a sweatshop to mass produce jewelry because we made everything in small batches and the women had the opportunity to work from home. Um, being fair with the people, pay fair prices to the world and also not being destructive to others. Uh, there are other companies that also offer the same medium, Tawa not, and I appreciate each one of them for what they are. I will never may like somebody of my competence goes and, and visit or so that I am in certain boutique and say, oh, I can offer what you what she offered to you, but in a, a cheaper price. I can do it for you because in the moment you could prices, guess what? The person that is working for you is suffering because you're not paying that human a fair price for the world because you are putting a human to mass producing our sweatshop and we don't want that we respect our women that work in our jewelry with perfect prices and we are involved with our community and we have the program uh, right now that is my pride is operation getting uh, empowering and we go every year to ecuador in christmas time to supply Barbie, Barbie dolls to orphan girls in orphanage in Ecuador. Um, uh, I hope you can see my videos in Instagram. And in school time, we, pro we provide the schools that they need for go to school because the, uh, how you say, the primary school or the fair school is free in Ecuador, but the kids still need to buy supplies for go to the school. So we, we help with the with the school supplies they need to, in order to go to the school and educate themselves. And that's the Operation Girl Empowerment that is right now my life because I don't have kids. My kid had four and also donated to the Animal Rescue Healing in Animal Friends of the Valley ourselves. Uh, but that project, Operation Girl Empowerment, is I don't have girls, those girls are like my, like my daughters <laughs> that I never had. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And being, this is what we're all about in this podcast as well, just empowering each other. So hearing you use the language that we actually use, we know that we made a, a fantastic choice in having you on the podcast because empowering each other is so rewarding for everybody involved. And uh, we can't say enough about it. So we really want to be able to also showcase everything you do. Um, so that people can come to you as well. So it's all about empowering each other, like you say. Thank you for that. Absolutely. And the colors are just absolutely vibrant and clearly can't be seen through podcasts. So we'll provide all of the links and try to catch the video version of this podcast. I'm wearing this lovely piece. Each piece, genuinely, you exemplify your life of mindfulness living and 
not only in your business, making it sustainable, seeing an opportunity where people would not see it. It, it is just so inspiring. Now, on the note of inspiration, what insights would you share, Alexandra, with our audience on how to remain true to your intentions as a female entrepreneur, especially during these challenging times? Yeah, in challenging times, you have the chance, like we did, to take a break, to take a break from the noise of every day, getting ready for the next show, getting ready for the next thing. We took a break to educate ourselves as a business owners. And we, even we were in our houses and we cannot share with anybody. We joined many female groups, the National Latina Business Association of Ireland and Par, the Global Society of Female Entrepreneurs. And we did many courses how to improve our search engine optimization because everything is online now. And we were not doing shows, so how to improve your search and your optimizations to be fine, better, how to improve the, your listings, how, so we, uh, how to rebrand your, your, your name and your company so speak better about your mission and your history, once you got the people really appreciate the history of the person behind a line. Mm -hmm. They had to like the person, before buying the product, you had to lie, lie and admire that person and say, that person is so me. We had the same values. So uh, all those things, we take it, the time for learn and evaluate and rebrand and re rewrite our history and our brand mission. Uh, um, it has been worthy. It has been worthy. Because we even get up, uh, approached by FAIR that I was rejected two years ago, the place that connect boutique owners with makers, and they put uh, um, invite us to participate in FAIR, and they rejected me two years ago. They told me I wasn't ready. And now, <laughs> after the pandemic, I'm taking the break for improve our business. We were invited to participate in FAIR. So, it may be like, oh, I am not doing anything. The word they stop. We didn't take a stop. I think we take the stop for look inside us and being a better businesswoman, a better entrepreneur, and face the challenging times. That is amazing advice because you're absolutely right. The people who did it right, like you, went within and also learned from, from other people, from companies, from themselves, because they went within. So that is amazing advice for anybody who's actually hearing it. Take a lesson, go within, start learning and improve yourself. Because I think as a businesswoman or as anybody who's doing business, you're searching for personal growth, whether you want to admit it or not, when you go into business, your personal growth journey goes up like like a like an arrow you know you have no choice you have to grow um so yeah thank you yeah alexandra just so our viewers our listeners know uh, what you're referring to the shows i i'm aware of these events where a lot of artists vend and during that period of one year lockdown many vendors were reacting versus alexandra you responded you responded and i recall you even rebranded to match your core value to your image which is now an elephant correct mm -hmm. in every in every piece in every necklace that i made i now put my my brand id is the elephant if this is my signature bed it's a signature bed. It's the elephant in a little bottom hanging in the necklace and hanging the pan lid in his throne. It's because the tawa is the alternative against the animal ivory. It's the same color ivory before we diet. And it's the elephant message in my signature bed. The elephant with the pan lid is saying, give me peace. Take the vegetable ivory, not my toast. <laughs> Very so nice. It's beautiful. It's Very nice. Message. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so conscious design and um, everything you do, you say, and the way you show up in life, it's about being mindful, which is an, an amazing entrepreneurship approach. Very intentional. Yeah. Very intentional. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. This weekend, we were in an art show in Balboa Island. Um, and it happened to me that the day before, even at this show, I, I went around the stores giving my cars and offering my in my business my jewelry and most of the people say oh no our 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 customers prefer gold and silver it's not the kind of jewelry that these people want here so no thank you thank you but no so i say oh i don't know it i, I had picked the right show because the store owners around here they don't want to make business with me but let's see, go, let's go open to the universe. <laughs> let's go open to the universe and try. And we had a successful show and everybody say, because my style is also colorful, they told me your jewels may us happy. It's playful, it's happy. You are a happy fun person and you can see that in your jewelry and you may happy. The people is cute, is happy like you. And even um, then, um, our gallery approached to me, the owners of our gallery this weekend and say, we want to have your jewels in our art jewelry. We never have seen jewels like that here in Balboa Island. And we don't want to consign, we want to shop from you. So that's amazing. That's <laughs> so, nice. so proud of you. Congratulations on that. And again, for our listeners, you really have to see the beautiful art. So. You would be doing a disservice to yourself if you don't go check out the YouTube channel and see the beautiful necklaces, the beautiful art that Alessandra has here for us. Thank you so much. Alessandra, maybe you can just uh, shout out your, um, your website or IG. We're going to put it in the description, but can you let us know what, how to reach you? Yeah, we have two websites, uh, organic jewelry by ali.com and the other is more uh, created for the search engine optimization because it's the name of my medium ali is me tagua is the medium jewelry.com so oh, we have two the, the minerals or materials we use to make the necklaces right that's the name of the um <laughs> Things that you use. Oh, nice. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alessandra, for having uh, come to see us because it was such a, a delight. And I, like you say, it makes you happy just seeing the art. So thank you very much for being with us today. Yes. This is where it comes from. This is the, it looks like a little coconut. Yeah, it does. And they're, they're called Togwa, correct? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, wow. that one. Comes like in coconuts, and we open, and here is the fruit, the nut, and from the <laughs> nut we made our beautiful jewels. Wow! You see an opportunity from something that may not on the surface appear to be anything. It's it's a true gift that you've given to the world, bold, beautiful, and yes, you make us happy, Alexandra. Yeah, I think it's meaningful you, <laughs> like We're living with meaningful, <laughs> meaningful you, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for the bye, girls. I love you. I love you, Chirpa. And we we'll send you a, a Christmas for you in red, a Christmas gift for Tanya, for sure. Yes, so I'll have... work with you on that. Make it... A little I piece of me, Tanya. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks again for tuning in. Check out the links in the description and please subscribe, follow, and share. And continue to be omnipresent.